This is the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III disassembly. If you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to use a hairdryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate so we can loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here is a look at the glass back plate. There are 12 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws have been removed, we can use our plastic pry tool to lift up and remove the top plastic cover. On the plastic cover itself, there are numerous antenna lines, which are these light colored gray lines. There's also an NFC antenna located over here, and your wireless charging coil is right over here. Underneath the wireless charging coil, there is some graphite film over here. And here's a look at the other side. We can see the graphite film over here helps transfer heat away from some of the components as well as the battery. The battery cable can now be disconnected. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. And here's the headphone jack cable, and it pops right out. There are two wire cables here, which need to be popped off. Now it's time to disconnect the front facing camera. Now this flex cable over here with LED flash and sensor has to be carefully peeled off. Once it's peeled off, it reveals another Phillips screw underneath, which needs to be removed. Once that Phillips screw has been removed, we can lift up and remove this plastic bracket. There's one more Phillips screw over here on the bottom right corner of the board, which needs to be removed. Once that screw is removed, we can lift up and remove the main board. Here's a better look at the main board. These are your two 12 megapixel cameras. The top is a 16 millimeter lens and the bottom is a 24 millimeter lens. Below them is your 3D ITOF and located right below that is your 70 millimeter to 105 millimeter 12 megapixel lens. This flex cable over here can also be disconnected from the main board. Now we can see a secondary microphone located over here on the top. The connector for this camera can be disconnected by just popping it off. And here's a look at these components underneath the shield. Another thing to mention, this is a dual layer board. Taking a look at the back, we can see the proximity sensor located over here. There's also two Phillips screws over here holding down this bracket, which is covering the connectors for the cameras. There's also some thermal pads located over here on top of this shield. The notification LED is located over here in the corner. Once the screws are removed on top of this bracket, we can remove this bracket, revealing the connectors for the cameras. Now that the shield has been removed, we can see the processor, RAM, and memory over here which both have thermal pads on them. In order to remove the speaker assembly, we need to lift it up from the bottom and pop the catches. And then there's a wire cable over here in the bottom corner, which needs to be lifted up and popped off. Now we can route this cable through the openings and separate this plastic piece. So taking a look at this plastic speaker housing, we have an antenna line running through it over here. There's some graphite film over here on top of the speaker. And there's a rubber gasket with a filter over here on the opening of the speaker. And the white small foam balls located over here help make the speaker sound louder and larger than it actually is. There's a flex cable over here we need to disconnect. And the wire cable over here in the corner we need to pop off. There are two Phillips screws holding on the subboard which needs to be removed. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. Your main microphone is located over here on this subboard. And here's a look at the other side. You can see your rubber gasket over here. Now in order to remove the charger port, there's a small piece of the flex cable over here, which we need to lift up and away from the housing itself or the mid frame. And then we're gonna lift up and pull out the charger port. So 
So here's the charger port itself. It has a red rubber gasket around it. And here's a look at the other side. In order to remove the linear vibrator motor or haptic feedback motor located over here, the connector is over here, which needs to be popped off. It's the white portion only. Gently lift it up and disconnect it. Now we can lift up and remove the haptic feedback motor. So once that's removed, we can see the screen cable located underneath. And there are two adhesive pads on either side holding it down, so we're going to have to gently pry it off. So if you're looking into doing a screen replacement, you wouldn't really have to do anything on the top portion aside from disconnecting the battery. You'd leave your motherboard intact. You would, however, need to remove your speaker assembly on bottom, as well as the subboard and haptic feedback motor to gain access to your screen cable. And then at that point, you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is, so you can loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then you'd pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply your new screen, making sure you run your screen cable through the opening or slit over here in the midframe, and just reattach it and reassemble the phone. In order to remove the battery, there are two adhesive pull tabs. One is located over here with this black tab, and another one is located right over here, also with a black tab. You can pull those, which will pull off the adhesive underneath the battery, allowing you to lift up and remove the battery. I personally want to reuse those two adhesive pull tabs, so I'm not going to pull them off. I'm just going to use some isopropyl alcohol to get some around the size of the battery. And I'm going to let it sit there for about a minute so it makes it easier to pry the battery off using a pry tool. Here's a better look at your battery. And I get a lot of people who ask this question, if it's a lithium polymer battery. And to answer that question, yes it is. It says lithium polymer over here, or LiPo. Some people get confused with the labeling over here, which says lithium ion, but all the batteries have that labeling on them. Here's a look at the other side. Once the battery has been removed, you can see those two pull tabs over here underneath the battery. We can also see this flex cable over here, which is routed in between the mid frame and the screen, which connects your main board to the subboard, as well as the screen and the haptic feedback motor. Moving on to the power button, fingerprint sensor, and the rest of the keys on the side. If you need to gain access to removing them, there's this plastic bracket over here, which you basically just need to lift away and pull off to gain access to those, and you can peel off the flex cable from over here on the bottom as well. Your EFP speaker is located over here on top, and it's held down with some adhesive, so if you have to replace that, just heat it up a little bit and pry it off. There's also another thermal pad over here on the midframe underneath the main board. There's some graphite film over here, as well as some over here, which is in between the midframe and the screen, and there's also copper tape on the back side of the screen. All of those basically help transfer heat away from the components and out to the front of the phone where the screen is. Now for the repairability score. I have to give this phone a 6 out of 10. The back plate is fairly easy to remove. However, disassembling the rest of the phone is pretty tedious and will take more time to do compared to a lot of other phones. Now it's time to put this phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive, reapply the back plate, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.